All righty, everybody. Welcome uh, to the uh, Monday Mastermind for December 5th. Um, good to see uh, we have at least one of our newer members uh, that joined this week in here. So um, good to see you, Greg. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot them up in the chat. We're going to um, talk about a few things, uh, you know, especially um, moving forward, you know, if it's your first Q4, uh, especially if you're doing new to RA and OA, you know, other than doing things like private label and wholesale, um, you know, you have to remember that the dates that Amazon gives you, that doesn't mean you stop buying, you know, continue to buy and send and people are going to continue to buy well into January. Of course, you know, people aren't going to be paying $300 for toys because, you know, stocks are going to return and people aren't going to be in such a, a crunch. But, um, you know, we have huge sale numbers all the way through, um, you know. Christmas morning isn't so great, but by Christmas afternoon, um, you know, people get those gift cards. Um, for one thing, people are opening presents on Christmas Eve, then they're opening them Christmas morning. Uh, people open their Christmas stockings and get a bunch of gift cards, you know, and may not um, open their presents until, uh, you know, later on in the day. So um, usually the morning is kind of a, a quiet time as far as sales for me, uh, year after year. But um, you know, by the afternoon and the next day, people have all those gift cards for one thing. So they're going to be spending all those gift cards they get, or they uh, they got gift cards that they didn't want and they sell them and buy what they want on Amazon. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen is that, you know, people, after they open their presents, they're going to, uh, you know, either be returning stuff to Amazon or returning them to the stores and getting that money and buying what they want. And immediately they're going to be buying what they want when they didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. Uh, you know, so there's several scenarios that's going to, you know, drive your sales again. Um, you know, and wherever your sales are at now, you know, it may not be uh, quite to that point, but it's going to be, uh, you know, still elevated considerably over the rest of the year. So uh, we, you know, you want to continue to ship as much as you can, um, even past the, those dates. And the dates um, in the Amazon calendar that everybody has been asking about is, you know, kind of the worst case scenario. It's like if, I don't remember what the dates are, but, you know, there's one for um, Super Saver shipping and one for, um, you know, uh, the two-day shipping and the one-day shipping cutoff, same-day shipping cutoff. Um, you know, and when you need to have the items to the warehouses to get them for all of those dates. So, um, uh, so remember, that's like the worst case scenario um, for those. And I'm just bringing it up right now, the 2016 holiday dates for FBA sellers. Um, So uh, right now we're at we're at the fifth of December. December fourteenth is the deadline for free shipping uh, for delivery for Christmas. Uh, the nineteenth is standard shipping. Uh, the twenty-first is last day for Prime two-day shipping. Uh, December twenty-second is last day for one-day shipping. Uh, the twenty-third is for next day shipping. The twenty-fifth. Take it easy because <laughs> returns are in your future. Okay, um, you know from Seller Lab. So. Um, you know, what we need to uh, think about here is that, uh, you know, those, uh, those are the last days for people to order. So for one thing, uh, you have to consider the dates that uh, you need to, you know, ship it so you have enough time to get there. And of course, everybody's seen the pictures and videos from the Amazon warehouses. You see how much stuff they're processing. So, you know, they're going to have to have probably extra time to process that. But even if you don't make it for Christmas, those items are still going to be um, um, we're already just having problems. So, um, you know, you, you have to have the extra time to process that stuff to get there. But even if you don't make it for Christmas, um, you know, our Christmas sales or what we would call Q4 sales go well into January. And as soon as, you know, that's over, you reinvest that money into Valentine's Day and then Easter after that and the 4th of July. And, you know, there, there's always another holiday to be reinvesting your money into. Um, 
but for now, you know, don't don't think about Christmas as the very last end date. Let's, you know, continue to be uh, stocking, um, and then after that, you know, we'll look at reinvesting. But uh, you know, for now, we just need to get as much uh, as much product as you can, and not worry about dates and uh, cutoffs and all that. Just continue to ship, continue to reinvest your money uh, as fast as you can. So. Um, you know, don't be so hung up on those days. And, um, you know, that's all I really want, want to say about that. And, you know, so many people are worried about the cutoff times that, that they're, you know, um, not worrying about selling stuff. I'm, I'm big on, you know, not worrying about all the little stuff and continue to get your products into Amazon, you know, uh, Selling on Amazon is very simple. People make it hard. People worry about all, all kinds of things that they don't need to worry about. And what you should be worrying about is, you know, what I consider the three things that, that uh, you need to do to sell on Amazon. You buy the stuff, you send the stuff to Amazon, and you get paid. And you just continue to do that. You take the money that they pay you, and you start that process over. And as long as you keep doing that, you know, if – you're gated in a category, well, there's tens of millions of products you can sell that you're not gated in. If you're gated in every category, there's still tens of millions of products you can sell in that you can sell and brands and, you know, whatever you can't sell, don't worry about that. Worry about all of the things you can sell. And if you're gated in something, you know, if you're trying to get, I know we've talked about it before, but if you're gated in, you know, a category that you can't sell in, let me know, you know, we have people that, um, you know, the have services that can help you get ungated. Um, you know, if you don't want to worry about wholesale and all that, we have people that can do that for you. Just, you know, sell what you can until you have enough money or you're ready to get ungated in those other things. You know, almost any brand out there, there's a few that you really, it just doesn't work. Like Nike doesn't want resellers. So there's really not a legitimate way to get in there. Um, Valerie, what's up? You made it. New computers, you know, uh, they can be a problem sometimes. So, so we really need to, um, you know, you really need to focus on what you can do. Don't worry about what you can't do. Don't worry about the hundreds or thousands of brands that you can't sell. You know, there's always been thousands of brands that you can't sell. There's just a handful that you can't now. If you can't sell um, Nike, you can't sell Lego or whatever it is, you know, don't worry about it. Who cares? focus on what you can do. There's so much stuff that you can sell. You know, don't worry about the negatives. Worry about uh, the positives in your business and what you can, what you can do to move forward. Um, there's so much opportunity on Amazon that, you know, don't waste your time worrying about that. Don't waste your time worrying about, you know, um, whatever it is, you know, your expiration dates or your labels and, and especially don't waste time. If you don't understand how to do something, you don't know, you know, that's our biggest problem. And of course our biggest turnover and the biggest turnover on Amazon, people don't understand how to do things. So you guys have made that step to, to learn how to do um, that stuff. But, you know, you have to take that extra leap and, and ask for help. You know, if you don't understand about expiration labels or, um, I know um, somebody asked me today about, you know, having a package that they didn't know how to prep, you know, and they asked me, don't waste your time, you know, searching message boards or whatever. Send me a message, send Valerie, that's what she's here for is to, um, you know, help guide, uh, guide you guys to get the best, um, to get on the best track. So if you don't know how to do something, just ask. I, I'm sure that I've done almost every scenario that you could think of in Amazon, especially if you're starting out. So um, if you have a question about anything, don't waste time, especially now in Q4. You got to get that stuff to Amazon, source as much product as you can. And if you do that, then, and you don't understand something, just ask. We can give you a very quick answer. I probably made a video about how to do it. And, uh, and you can keep moving on and, and, and keep so on to uh, John. I think he asked us about uh, Feedback Genie. Um, there's a, a couple big ones, Feedback 5, Feedback Genius. Um, the one I prefer, and we've, we do a lot of business with them, and um, we have one of their um, 
their senior employees that uh, I, I do speak with quite often. So, if, of course, if you have any problems, we can get those resolved uh, very quickly or questions or anything like that. They also offer a free service. I'm talking about Feedback 5. Um, and we do have, um, I think, some kind of special link you get. Uh, um, and with Feedback 5, you, um, uh, Valerie, are you able to pull up the link for Feedback 5? Um, I'm not sure what kind of um, deal they had for us, but um, they're going to be doing a webinar with us. I think we actually have three webinars coming up in the next few months um, with, uh, with them. They, they run a, uh, a few great, uh, great tools. Um, they have uh, Feedback 5, uh, what's called Restock Pro. If you're doing wholesale, this is a must. Um, it, if you're doing wholesale, it's going to... Um, tell you when you should reorder. Um, it'll keep track of everything with your Amazon account. Um, so uh, when you get, get down to a certain amount, when you have whatever it is, 10 or 15 or whatever you have set um, as the amount left, it's going to tell you that you need to uh, restock it. And it's going to know that, you know, that, um, that specific account is, you know, let's say 20 days out to get it to Amazon, you know, the time to order. So they fill it and then they ship it in and, you know, it gets to Amazon and it's going to help you. Um, it's going to create purchase orders. It's going to do all that. It's going to do everything, but uh, actually send them out. But you, it creates a, even creates a purchase order for you. And you can click one button and uh, send it in. So if you're doing um, wholesale, it's, it's definitely a must. They're going to do a full webinar just for us, just for the mastermind group, um, as well as one on Feedback 5. And they also have a tool called Ecom Spy, which you can um, basically spy on specific ASINs on Amazon and, and track them and do all that. So, uh, but what they do for uh, Feedback 5, it's, um, it's a great tool. We're gonna go through, um, I'll, I'll go through the website and show you. They actually have a free plan that's gonna do um, it'll do 50 emails a month. So that way that works is you, know, you may have gotten 500 orders. So it's just gonna do the first 50, you know, that it tracks through the API. It's gonna send them, um, you know, requests to, to leave you feedback. Um, and then if, as you upgrade, I think it's like um, 250 or 200, 250 for like 50 still in uh, so it's like 20, 20,000 emails a month. So um, they're going to, uh, track your feedback, let you know. Um, they're gonna help you create the emails and you can set up templates and all that. And um, it does all the different, um, I wouldn't say everyone, but um, I know it does, you know, Amazon.com and Canada and Mexico and um, all the, you know, European ones, the UK and Germany and Spain and um, Italy and France. And uh, I don't know which other ones I'm forgetting, but um, it does, quite a few of them. So, um, Valerie, were you able to get that, uh, that link? Oh, uh, you have no sound. I, I don't know what's going on there, but okay. So, um, we'll get that link for you in just a minute. I think if you, they gave us some kind of a discount link where you get extra, I think you get extra leads when you sign up. I'm not sure what they, um, what they actually give you, but uh, let me just pull that up for you guys. And you can find all this on your, um, if you log into the website, of course, seanmayo.com where, where everything's at. Um, and then we have a section called recommended software. Um, and usually we are so much more prepared than this. Okay, so maybe we don't have a, a special link for them, but we will, um, I'll check back with them because I'm pretty sure uh, we had something set up with them. But uh, here you can see all the plans. And I'm just gonna post that in the chat for you guys. 
So uh, there's a plans for feedback five. Just set a, sign up for the free one. Don't get any of their paid plans. Try it out. See if you like the interface. There are other ones. There's Feedback Genius um, from Seller Labs, um, Jeff Cohen, and um, you know they also have some kind of a free um, a free plan too. So you know try them out. Do both. You know they're not going to really interfere with each other. Try one. Try the other. You know see which one you like best. It's the same with. Um, all these tools that we talk about, you know, try them out. Almost everybody has some kind of a free program. Um, you know, and it's free. Once you set it up, it's going to automatically every month send out to the first 50 and it's just going to go, go from there. Um, let's see. Um, oh, okay. So inventory lab and profit bandit, do they overlap? in functions and do you need both? Um, so uh, inventory lab itself is, um, is for listing and I believe uh, they do have a, I don't really use inventory lab. Um, uh, now we have used it, but I believe they do have a, um, a sourcing option as well. Um, I know it's, uh, I think, $50, uh, $50 a month. Um, I'm looking on their website right now, but um, Profit Bandit is a, um, you know, a mobile sourcing tool. You know, we use ScanPower. We prefer ScanPower. We've been using it since 2012. We've also tried Inventory Lab uh, on several different occasions. Um, I don't like it because uh, one of the big problems is that it doesn't, um, you know, when you list with ScanPower, uh, it sends the information to Amazon and gets back the results of where, uh, what warehouse it wants to go to. Inventory Lab uh, lists in batch. So what that means is when it's done, when you're done listing everything and you submit it, it's going to send that batch out and then it's going to get a result of where it goes. So it takes, it makes a guess. Uh, when you uh, when you first list, and then um, the warehouses would always change every time that we've um, we've done it for to help our clients or anything else. So uh, we prefer not to. Um, we just don't like Inventory Lab. Uh, you know, same price, same everything. Uh, profit Profit Band is a mobile scanner, just like Amazon has a mobile scanner. Um, you know, so it's really uh, which one you prefer. Um, okay, so John asked, how to use TA to its best potential? I'm not getting great results at the 50% ROI and above level. Lots of time spent filtering mismatches in Amazon multi-packs, but few results. Um, so we can definitely go over tactical arbitrage. Um, I would hope that you've gone through my videos and the TA course um, because we've covered, I know that and a lot more. So. Um, you know, it's best to go over that course, but uh, I will cover that and, and give you some tips on how to do that. Um, an expiration dates. I had two products today that Amazon asked for dates, but they were nowhere near, um, they're nowhere to be found on the products. It can be hard sometimes. Sometimes they don't have them. You know, sometimes you just uh, have to figure it out. So, um, you know, if you can give specific examples or let me know privately, I can help you find that. Sometimes there's a lot code. Sometimes they use date codes that can be deciphered and, you know, there's website, different websites out there that, um, you know, can decipher those for you. Sometimes you just have to contact them, tell them you have a lot code and you want to know what the expiration date is. And sometimes they won't even tell you, they'll tell you that there isn't an expiration date. Um, but, you know, they, what they, so when they tell you that, you, you can ask for, um, the, what the manufacturer date is based on that lot code and then what the shelf life is. So they might say there's a two year shelf life um, and the manufacturer date was whatever. So you just go two years from that day. We've run into all of those different scenarios before. Uh, sometimes it's a guessing game. Sometimes they'll just, um, and usually you can get that information out of there. Sometimes, you know, you might, you might just have to use your best judgment and, you know, figure something out, make it up basically, you know, like salt, We've had clients that have, um, that have tried to list salt and there's no expiration date on. Of course, everything but honey, every consumable or you know food item other than honey uh, actually has an expiration date. So um, you know they are there. They just 
don't want to tell you a lot of times, um, but the information is there to be found. Um, regarding ASIN changes, uh, I often get ASIN change messages. What should I be looking for each time to deal with these ASIN notifications? So the ASIN change, um, the ASIN changes are probably the most important messages that you get. There's no automated way to look at them. The only thing you get is an email. Um, and there's more to that question, but um, you know, pay very close attention to those emails you get. And in the emails you're gonna get, um, you know, especially quantities. Quantities is a big thing. You know, the weight or maybe a description or a little title change may not be a big deal, but when they change the quantity, when you're listing a single item and somebody changes a quantity to six, um, most messages now let you say, you know, that you don't agree with that or don't approve of it or, you know, I've seen a few different um, scenarios in those. So you can click on that, but also open a case. You may want to, um, do something to change that listing, maybe change it to 100 bucks or something. So don't sell till you get it worked out, but open a case and say that, um, uh, you know, that it was changed and it's incorrect and your single item is now being sold as a six pack um, and it's going to damage the customer experience. Always, you know, talk about the customer experience every time you open a case, because so that's what's gonna get the fastest results. Um, also again, ASIN change, uh, that was a single unit, but later changed to a six pack. I fortunately caught this one, uh, but not get multiple ASIN notifications and wondering how that works, who is changing, what should uh, be my processes around it. Okay, so that ties into what we were just talking about. And, um, you know, just like you can uh, submit updates to, uh, to listings, anyone who is a seller on that listing um, basically is, assigned a percentage of ownership. So um, there's some magical formula that Amazon has that's going to decide what, um, you know, what percentage of the total ownership you have. So uh, every seller on that has that. Whoever created it doesn't matter uh, with Amazon. It's, once you create it, it's just, it's Amazon's listing. So whoever has the most amount of ownership, you may have to submit changes two or three times, but if um, you open that case, they're, they're usually going to fix that. Uh, that's how pictures are updated. That's how, um, you know, weights and, and all that is updated. Now, uh, with weights, you know, if you see like a number with like 10 digits long, they're usually, uh, they're usually weighing that there and then they're updating it with, you know, an exact weight. Um, so, oh, okay. So we have a discount code for feedback five. We don't have, so use that when you sign up. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what you get. I'll get with them and find out. Um, well, John, like I, um, I'm, I'm going back in messages a little bit, but you said, oh, if you don't use inventory lab, then, then you probably don't need it. Right, we prefer, um, Scan power. Oh yes, sorry. Scan power is definitely the same thing as inventory lab. They're both to list products on Amazon, so you don't need one if you have the other. And they basically do the exact same thing. I told you why I don't like it, um, but you know, other people have said that they haven't had that problem, um, so they may have just been lucky. But um, going back to that, Scan Power does the same thing. Try them both. They both have a free trial, and whichever interface you like better. I mean, I've been using Scan Power since 2012. It, uh, one of my favorite things, and you'll see that if you watch the videos, is that you, when you print a label, it prints the warehouse it goes to right on that label. So it knows, you know, for sure, it's never changed, not once for me. So, you know, uh, one of the ways that we do, we process things is, we can scan our, our, uh, all our products. Let's say we have 30 or something. We put them on the shelf. We have 30 or something on the shelf. We take a post-it note and I have somebody go count them all up, and put a post-it note with how many there are. And then, uh, and then we put, um, 
we take that one with the post-it note and we scan it and print the labels and put it back on the shelf. And then, you know, I mean, we have a big operation with the warehouse. So what we'll do is, um, you know, somebody else can go behind it and put them in whatever boxes they go in. Um, but, you know, you could do the same thing. If you want to go and scan them all, print your labels, and then come back and put them in the boxes, um, you can do that with Scan Power because it prints the warehouses right there. It doesn't tell you on the screen, you know, three here, four here, seven here. Uh, it actually prints them right on the labels. Um, okay, so. Sorry, I'm just catching up on all the messages. The referral code is exclusively for mastermind members. It will automatically. Okay, so you get a 30 day free trial for Restock Pro instead of uh, 14. That's great. Um, you'd like to better understand the sequence for using a cashback site along with the gift cards. Uh, I've watched the videos just, uh, just a little fuzzy. Um, I'd also like to understand how buying the TA list, Sean, creates shortcuts to process of finding products. So, um, okay, so I see there's a few questions about tactical arbitrage, so I'll be happy. It's my favorite thing to talk about. Um, right now is tactical arbitrage. I mean, the software is just so, uh, so amazing, and Alex Moss does such a great job keeping up with everybody and, and uh, adding things. So, um, I'll definitely cover those answers. Uh, I want to get into showing you how to use a cashback uh, and gift cards, and um, also show you how you integrate those inside of tactical arbitrage. And then we'll get into your other tactical arbitrage questions. Okay, so uh, let me just load up a couple screens, and I'll go ahead and share my screen and show you how all that works. And any other questions, of course, uh, go ahead and shoot in the chat. I'm going to, uh, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so we're here on our tactical arbitrage screen. I'm gonna show you two sites that I like the best are, Um, we use Cashback Monitor for cashback sites, and I have to close some of these windows. Um, and we use Card Bear mostly for um, for gift card sites. So. Let's say, for example, we want to, um, to buy from Kohl's. Before I buy anything, before I even start my search on, uh, on tactical arbitrage, we're going to go to we're going to go to these three sites and we're going to look and see what's available because we want to plug them in. Uh, we're going to plug them into tactical arbitrage and we're going to use those. Um, is, is this right? So apparently, uh, Kohl's doesn't have any cash back. That doesn't seem right to me. Is this the only Kohl's? Okay. I knew that wasn't right. Okay, so uh, if we go to Card Bear, we can type in here in the box as I already did, Kohl's, and we bring up Kohl's, and we see that um, the best price is 6.2% right now from Ray's. Uh, 
So the current discount is 6.2. The average discount that this usually is is 9.4% off. So it's showing you that the advice is weight because um, it, if the discount currently was like 9.4 and, uh, and the average was 6.2, it would be telling you to buy here because um, it's saying the average is higher than the current. So obviously you would want to wait for a higher, um, you know, a higher current price. And just like Keepa, this shows you a graph um, of history back to the beginning of the last year. So you can see there's been a downward trend right now. Of course, people before Christmas are buying gift cards. So now is a bad time to be buying gift cards. But after Christmas, uh, it's going to go up. You see here, this is Christmas down to there was no discount, you know, in November. And then we can see, we can follow, um, you know, January 2015. This is from 14 you know how the discount kept going up and up. This is the beginning of January because people got all these cards for Christmas and then they sold them. So there was so many of them, the, the discount just keeps getting higher and higher. And we can see uh, in 2016, it was as low as 3.2% uh, right after Christmas in 15. And it just continued to go all the way up to its highest point, which was towards the end of January up to 19% off. Uh, so we can see before Christmas, obviously, people are buying gift cards. After Christmas, they're going to be selling them. Uh, so right after Christmas, a month or two after Christmas is the time to be buying. Uh, and then, you know, it levels off. So this is the area, as you can see, both years, this was the area when, you know, it leveled off to a normal spot. Uh, so right now, bad time to buy gift cards. Uh, you know, still, even if you're saving 6.2%, better than saving nothing. Um, and then uh, you can also enter, you know, where you want it to be. So you can see that the average is 9.4. Maybe you don't want to get it till it's 10 or, you know, 15 is a high point. So let's say we don't want to find, we want to know when it hits these high points. And we can just punch in our email here. And it's going to send us an email uh, as soon as it gets up to 15%. So... But you can see here, um, I didn't buy anything here, and you might want to take that one extra step and click through to raise because what we're going to look at here is um, how you're getting these cards. So there's two different kinds of cards, um, more at some sites, but as you can see, um, there's, you know, most sites have three options, an e-gift, a voucher, um, and a physical. So the physical cards are going to have to actually mail it to you. So if you find a deal today, obviously you can't use it. Um, so this you can get e-gifts. So as long as the card says e-gift, they're going to email it to you. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it takes a half hour, an hour. Some sites may take a few hours because they have to manually verify each sale. Um, so um, regardless, we, we now know that it's 6.2% that we can get off here. Now, if we look over at Kohl's uh, for the cashback monitor, this is going to show you all your cashback sites. So you'll have to sign up for each one of these sites. And we would, I think we signed up to every one of them by now, but um, we would look at uh, which one is the best. We're going to go to that site, create an account, um, and we see that we can get 10% with Ebates this week. But maybe next week, Ebates only has 3% or 2%. Um, you know, and it may be something else because all these different cashback sites that are running deals. So just because you got 10% off or they were the best place to go, um, you know, today doesn't mean they're going to be the best place to go next week. So um, it's definitely a good idea. Every time you do a search, every time you're ready to buy, uh, that you want to go and check these sites out and, um, you know, make sure that it's the best one or there might be an be even better one. Um, you know, so you're getting 10% back, uh, I mean, which is huge. Uh, you Promise um, is really my favorite one. They're giving you 5% cash back right now, and they give you 5% at almost every site that they support. Uh, so You Promise is definitely a great one to, um, to use. It's, it's actually um, like to save money for college, and a lot of people stay away from it because of that, but uh, you can request uh, a payment at any time you want. So it's not only to go to a college fund. 
that's just how they promote it. Um, so some other things that are here is if you use travel miles, um, it tells you which one is the best travel miles and also credit card points. So instead of getting, you know, one point, which is usually a penny per dollar spent, you see Barclay cards giving you two points per dollar. You know, the a a a uh, Amex Plenty, uh, if you go through the marketplace, it's giving you three points per dollar. And, and you can see as well here, all of the, what each one of these are giving you. Uh, so if you have any of these, you know, um, you're also at an advantage, but, um, you know, you may be able to double these or triple these, however, um, whatever programs you have going with these or, um, but as you can see, you're not going to get 10% back. So you may be better off doing this than, than, than dumping them into, um, you know, your travel or credit card points. Um, and then there's some other things like swag bucks, and I, I don't even know what this memo link thing is. It's usually only swag bucks over here. Um, and you can also see how many people have viewed it, how many people have favorited it. And, um, and the third thing we're going to do is go to the actual site. So we're going to see what kind of deals they have here. Um, and this ties into another service that we, um, that we do, uh, which I, I think most of you guys are, are already using. But um, it, I really usually don't recommend using um, Kohl's credit cards, but or credit cards in general. But uh, in this case, Kohl's is um, has a lot of good deals. But right now, any way you pay, take twenty percent off. If you use a credit card, you're only getting twenty five percent off. But then you can't get your credit card rewards points or however it is that you're actually paying in the end. And remember, whatever you're doing here. Um, you know, you may be able to get even more back if you're using um, your rewards. And you might be able, you can't use these through here, but um, if you have double for you know, Amazon or other online shopping or whatever, um, you know, that they're doing, you know, shopping in grocery stores and things like that, you know, you're gonna add that into here too. So um, uh, if you have the credit card rewards, when you put it into TA, uh, if it's, you know, 10% back, you may get um, another whatever back. Uh, so don't forget to add uh, whatever rewards you're doing. So right now, any way you pay, you get 20% off. So, um, you know, this is what we're going to look at. We're getting 20% off here. We're getting 6.2% off here. And we're getting 10% off here. So it's not 36.2% that you're getting back. Um, it's actually, um, it would actually be less, but you have to, um, you know, because you have to figure it out correctly. So, um, and I've verified this with Alex several times now, um, you have to put these in order because if you just add all those up, it doesn't equal the same amount of money, um, which is very important. So we know we're getting 20% off if we search a call. So we're going to type in, we're going to have 20% off here um, because you have to do this in the order that you get the deals. So the next one is 6.2% off for using um, a gift card. Oops. And then number three is gonna be your cash back because that's gonna be uh, the last thing and that's, that's 10. So we can't add all these up together because when we pay, if we spend $100, for example, you get 20% off. Um, so that now makes it $80. Um, so if we took 32% off of um, or whatever it is, 36.2% off of the $100, that's going to make it, you know, 33.8%. But that's not actually what you get. So you get 20% off of 80 or 20% off 100, that makes it 80. And then off of that amount, you're going to take 6.2% because you're actually paying, you're not paying um, on 100%, you're actually going to pay uh, with your gift card off of the $80 after you get that 20% off. So after you pay this, the total that you pay isn't going to be $80. It's going to be 80, um, you know, and minus the 6.2% for the gift card. And uh, then whatever the total is, the final total after all these discounts, you're going to get 10% of that back through the cashback site. Um, so I hope I explain that as, as easily as possible. Um, Let's 
Um, yes, Santosh, we, um, we do use Rev ROI, um, of course, but uh, the thing that we do is um, I, I do use the cashback monitor, um, and I suggest you do too if you have uh, the other options. But uh, of course, I'm showing everybody the way. Um, we do have a link for Christopher Grant's Rev ROI, and I can show you that uh, in a minute as well. Um, but the thing is that uh, it doesn't show travel miles or credit cards or anything else. It's just going to show you cashback sites. So if you have these other things, um, and I find it a lot better to um, to use this, you know, beforehand. So when we're shopping or whatever else, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use Rev ROI because it's going to show uh, the gift cards and that other information on the site. But when we're actually doing the search, um, you know, when I'm preparing to use in using tactical arbitrage. Uh, I don't use that because I want to see all all the options available there. Um, okay, all right, Greg. Uh, so uh, I guess you're the one who had the question on that. Um, and we've made videos as well. So if you want to go back and you can watch the videos um, in the TA training course on um, on doing all of that stuff. And there's a link for uh, Rev ROI. Uh, use the code Mayo, and I believe you get it for I think twenty bucks or uh, something. It gives you seven or nine dollars off um, on top of that. So um, use Mayo at checkout um, for your coupon code when you're using the additional discounts. But even though okay, so when you're using the additional discount code. With TA, am I correct to assume that even though the current GP uh, gross profit or ROI may be lower based on just the price differential, but is the ROI displayed based on the store coupon discount, or is it still just the regular ROI calculated by TA, and we have to keep the discount in mind when manually sorting? I hope this question was clear. Um, I think what you're asking is when using the additional disc. Okay, so what we were just talking about here, uh, is this what you're speaking of, Santosh? The, uh, the store price reductions when you said additional discount? Okay, so um, yes, when you look at, uh, let's go over to our uh, view data page. So when we look at the, um, the results here, these results are based on the discounts. Um, and once you save these, you can see there's no option here. But when we look at, uh, we don't actually use the save list, but um, okay. So when we look at the save list here, once you save, uh, save any of your results here, you can update these. Now, uh, you see this gold button here, it says update adjusted prices. So now, when there was a store price adjustment, you can select whatever, you can select the Kmart and then change your store price. So uh, if a gift card sells out or the gift cards go up from six to 10, you can change that information here. Um, you can change, you know, any of these, excuse me, any of these percentages. Um, so there's a very easy way uh, to update that at any time. Obviously, if you select Kmart and Toys R Us and Tart, excuse me, uh, Kmart and Toys R Us and Target, then um, you know you're going to update the adjusted prices on these three items, um, all to the same percentage. So um, you know, be careful about what you're adjusting your prices uh, based on. So um, I hope that cleared that question up. Um, now going back to our other tactical arbitrage issues. Um, now, John, I. I really think that, um, you know, if you're finding a ton of bad results, um, you know, the problem with tactical arbitrage and mismatch results, um, if you're using um, software that, or you're using sites that have the listings um, that are doing UPC matching, um, then the problem is gonna be, the problem is that when they're originally listed on Amazon, people listed them uh, badly. Uh, I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. People 
didn't do it correctly. So, you know, they bought a UPC on eBay and then they used that to list a product or one was already listed and they didn't want any competition. So they got another UPC or made one up or got off another product and they listed that. So now your toy is not in the right, isn't listed under the right UPC. It's listed under a different UPC because that one was already used. Or then somebody lists a product and well, somebody stole that, that UPC because you know, they wanted it to make their second one. And now you can't list it under a legitimate one. And now you have to get a different UPC. You know, there's a hundred different scenarios that, uh, that can, you know, cause things to be listed under bad UPCs. So it's not the software. You know, the software is a computer that is doing a, me a mechanical process. It's, it's looking at Walmart or whatever the site is and matching that UPC number to the UPC number on Amazon. So if it's, if it's bad, it's because probably the person who originally listed it, um, you know, didn't put the right information in. Um, so what we can do about that is, um, for one thing, if, if it's a big issue for you, which, you know, I've made uh, videos about this, of course, but, you know, if an item doesn't match, you know, you move on to one that does. I mean, so many people complain about items not matching. You know, and I say, you know, so, so what? Okay, it doesn't match, move on to something that does. I mean, we're doing one scan that has, you know, almost 900 results, you know. That may or may not be, uh, okay. So we see this product, this product doesn't match. You click on Marcus Mismatch, you never see it again. Same thing with whatever's going on here, you know. Uh, mismatch, mismatch. Okay, I mean, how long does it take to click on that? You're not, you're not seeing that. Oh, this is a T-shirt, and this is, you know, uh, a front bumper spoiler cover, or whatever. You know, so we're not going to click on this and open this, and click on this and open this, and you know, investigate. It. You know, we have the pictures right here. Um, if you're downloading, if you're downloading it as a spreadsheet, then you know you're wasting time. But you know, we see mismatch. Okay. Okay, this is a mismatch. You know, this is a mismatch. Mismatch, I mean, you know, it shouldn't take a second each to remove these mismatches. Or, you know, if it's something you just don't care about. I'm, I'm not buying, you know, um, well, one's a, one's a log cover, log splitter cover, and one's a log splitter. So, obviously, they, those don't match. This might match if we look into it a little more. It may or may not, but I don't care. I'm just... I'm not selling a generator on Amazon FBA. So, you know, I'm getting rid of that. This is a mismatch. You know, I mean, I can go through a thousand of these in, you know, a half hour and get rid of all the mismatches and then go back and investigate the ones that, uh, that aren't mismatches. Um, but the best way to find products that, that are not, that are not mismatches, they're gonna start out by looking at, um, let me find the file here. Um, I may not have this up here. Okay, just a moment. I thought we had, I had that loaded. So um, I'm running a scan right now, as you can see, but usually uh, right here, you're gonna see a list of the, um, the list of uh, sourcing domains. So, um, or it may be labeled as UPC matching. So as you can see here, this is not a list created by me. This is a list created by, um, by Alex Moss from Tactical Arbitrage. And Go over to the chat. So I just put the link to it in here, but you can get it every time you look at tactical arbitrage. And you can see this list here. You see the ones that say UPC uh, versus uh, the one that say title. 
of the title match, and it's going to show you how good of a match it is. Good, average, very good, poor, above average. So this is what the programmers uh, who work for Alex have have deemed uh, this site is, the type of title match it is. So if you have like Crate and Barrel, I know this is a horrible site to do. Um, so it says poor because it, it really is. It's, it's poor match. It doesn't do it very good. You're going to get a lot of mismatches. So um, poor depends on the day. So, you know, you want, basically you want the UPC matches. And we do title matches. We do JC Pennies. I mean, we find so much stuff at JC Pennies because nobody else is searching for it. It's a title matching site, you know, and people don't want to put in the work. The people who do put in the work are the ones who are going to get the best results. Um, so if, if it just bothers you that much, stick to the UPC sites. That's how you're going to get the best results. You can get the least amount that are mismatches. And remember that it's not tactical arbitrage. If you're using OAX ray, you're going to get the same bad results because it's matching UPCs to the UPC that's entered in, in Amazon. It's pulling the information off of the website. So that information, you know, it, it's every tool is going to pull the same information. Um, so if you stick to the UPC sites, you're going to cut down on mismatches. You mark it as a mismatch, you're never going to see that item again uh, and, and move on. And um, Um, because of the lack of actionable results. I found a few, but just not that many. I, you know, um, John, I mean, you can, um, I mean, we can talk about this privately, but, you know, I really don't, um, I mean, I don't agree with the results, so um, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, we find hundreds and hundreds of items every day, um, so, you know that we buy, so I, I really don't um, don't agree with what you're getting. But you know, let's talk privately and like hone in on what issues you're having. Let's you know, let's look at the sites you're working with, and you know, the sites may just you know have bad results. You know, um, you know, and again, it, it's you know, if you're finding products that aren't good or. You know, I mean, there's, I, I don't know how many users there are at Active Arbitrage, but, you know, at least hundreds, maybe into the thousands, and, you know, uh, there's a ton of people who are making, you know, doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month now, um, you know, a lot, and it has a lot to do with tactical Arbitrage. So, um, you know, I mean, we're getting great results. Other people are getting great results. Um, so, uh, obviously, it's not the tool, and I'll, you know, I'll be happy to go over you know, with you, the specifics of what you're doing to uh, hopefully hone in on that. Um, and I believe there was, um, let's see, Rob wanted to know, uh, four, three or four ASIN quantity changes in the last few weeks. Uh, we get ASIN quantity changes every day that need, the cases need to be open. I did a remo removal, removal order and close the listing. No, do not do that. Uh, if you don't catch one within the first few hours in itself, does Amazon hold you accountable? What's the best way to handle? I haven't had one yet, but I can see where that could occur on a fast moving night. Yes, it can, and it has. They're not going to hold you I mean, too accountable. You know, if it goes a week, you know, uh, it's your responsibility to be keeping up with those emails. And, you know, that should be your first priority. You know, set a notification, you know, set it as whatever it is, the VIPs on your phone. Um, but, you know, Amazon holds you accountable for, you know, keeping up with those emails. So if you say, oh, I just didn't see the email, you know, that's, you know, that's a bigger issue for Amazon than that one little product. Um, you know, those emails are, are very important. So, okay, so uh, let's go over I assume this is from Greg because um, he's the newest member here. But um, I'd like to understand how buying the TA lists, Sean creates shortcuts the process of finding products. So um, the lists I make, and there are some other creators who make them. Um, we have a lot of them. 
there's actually a list right here. Valerie will post the link. Uh, we give you 25% off if it's a bundle or the single list. It's TA-MM. If you're watching a replay, that may change. Uh, so, um, you know, if you don't know the, the code right now, um, that's a coupon code that works on everything except a couple products like sign up for the mastermind groups and, um, and also our, um, um, our step ahead technical sourcing sheet we'll go over in a minute, but um, this is the list of all the ones that are available. Um, right, Valerie, can you post the link to, um, you know, the, the pages you just made that have all of our, not the one for Alex, but the one for us that, uh, that has a link to all of the, the videos and the, the other stuff, the direct link. So um, when you buy one of these lists, um, let me stop my share for just a moment. Um, what these lists do is, what we've done is we've compiled uh, through programming, not just you know a VA who checks because then we can get a complete um, a complete tree of the whole site. So if you go to Walmart, for example, um, what could take you? Uh, I don't know how long it would take you or a VA to do days or hours or I mean. I would say at least days because some sites have up to 10,000 different categories. And what we've taken done is taken every category uh, for a website. And I'm gonna um, bring one up and show you guys. Um, we've taken every category and uh, we've put them into a bulk sourcing sheet. So what this is gonna let you do is, uh, in essence, search the whole site. Um, so let me just bring up bring up Walmart. It's only about two thousand categories. Okay, so there's a list to buy them. Um, as a mastermind member, you always get twenty five percent off. If you don't use the code, we can't give you discounts. We or can't give a refund. It just doesn't work with uh, with Gumroad, the software we use. So. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen again. So you should see that here. So what this is, uh, and what we've done here is, these are the category IDs that you would use for Walmart. Um, and this is the, pay, the starting page, of course. It starts on page one, uh, what page uh, it ends on. And um, so for, for Walmart, um, if you're using the API, which everybody should be doing, the Walmart website only shows 25 pages and up to 40 items per page. So that means you can only look at a thousand items. But if you use the API that um, we work closely with Alex to get set up, is um, it's gonna show you 100 items per page with no limit. So if you can see here, um, home decor rugs, which may not have anything that you need, has 1,018 um, pages, and that's 100 items per page. So that's um, 100,000, um, what is that, 101,800 uh, items in that category, and they go down uh, from there. So this one, you know, has, you know, 92,600 or so um, items in it. And it's gonna go all the way down probably to page one. So from one to one, which means it has under uh, 100 items in it. So um, so you can see 1,514 lines. That means it's 1,513 categories. Uh, think about how long it would take you to go to um, you know, walmart.com and search the hierarchy of every single uh, category and find all the subcategories and have have the complete um, to have a complete list like this of every category and subcategory, I, and I can tell you what this is going to amount to. This ha Walmart.com has over 4.2 million uh, products listed on um, in their database. Uh, so what this is, you get this complete list. Now remember that Wal um, tactical arbitrage only allows 400 lines um, for a bulk search, or if you didn't know, that's what it allows. Um, when you're doing a search of a website. So what we do here is we're gonna look at this and we're going to, um, what I would do here is I'm going to sort this. So now I've sorted this by the full name. And as you can see here, you can only have these, we've also put it in the format 
um, of the bulk upload that you can do. So it's already in the right format. It's saved to the CSV file. All you have to do is come in here and narrow this down to 400 lines, delete this column. If it says full name, you must delete this column D before the scan will work. So uh, you're gonna get this down to 400 lines. You're gonna delete this column um, and, and then you're ready to upload it. That's all there is to it. Um, so now to get it down there, you know, what we suggest is to do a category or a group of subcategories that you want, you know, because the results in books aren't going to be the same as the results in groceries that you like. So um, what we would do is, you know, select whatever you wanted to say if you just wanted to look at books, delete everything else but books out of this, and uh, delete column D, of course, and then upload it. Um, and then you would have a full scan of that category, that set of subcategories. Usually what we're gonna do is split this up into several uh, lists. So, you know, we'll do one, you know, everything that we want together that would have, you know, similar results like grocery, health, beauty, maybe auto is gonna have the same um, type of results so we can have, um, you know, the same filters in tactical arbitrage because, Obviously, we may want to look at under 50,000 in grocery, but we may want to look at under 500,000 in books, for example. So, um, you know, that's, I think these, these lists are a great value. It's a great sa time saver. There's nothing you can do with stuff that you get from me that, you know, you couldn't do on your own. But, I mean, the, the time savings uh, is huge, and there's hundreds and hundreds of, of tactical arbitrage users that, um, you know, that, that are great. So, um, you know, the list is right here of what we have. And one other thing uh, that we have, and I really don't talk about this very much at all, is um, is this. It's called a step ahead tactical sourcing sheet. It's under 25 bucks a month. Um, and if you're interested in expanding the stores you're looking at, if you're interested in looking, you know, at more stores, um, this is. Um, you know, something we, we put a lot of time and effort into. And what this is, is I have a full-time employee that we've signed up for the mailing list for every store that Tactical Arbitrage supports in the U.S. And uh, we get their emails every day. And today, for example, we went through over 500 emails and we, we figure out what, um, what deals are worthwhile for, for Amazon sellers, you know, like here, Adorama. I mean, have you ever bought an Adorama? I haven't, but we signed up for their mailing list anyway, and they have up to an 80% off site-wide sale right now. Uh, this place, you know, 50% off list price, $10 off of any $30 purchase, $20 off of one single item. Of course, Bed Bath & Beyond is always doing that. Um, so you can, for one, get out of your comfort zone and every store that Tactical Arbitrage supports, you now know all the deals that they have, most of these aren't being advertised and they're just um, usually just for people who sign up for their mailing list. When the deal starts, which sometimes they're starting in the future um, and because they'll have, you know, a deal today's Monday, they'll be posting a deal that, you know, starts on Friday. So you can run that store now and for the next three days, run the whole store. You know, if you know you're going to get a 15% off site wide or 30% off of, you know, all toys, or that's just top toys, but if, you know, whatever the deal is, you can run all those products for the next few days, even before the deal starts. So when the deal starts, when the deal ends, a link to uh, the sale, if it's available, if not, we'll just send you to the main site. Um, what kind of discount gift card there is, a link to the gift card site, cashback site with a link to it. Um, and then if we made a, um, a sourcing list, um, you're going to get, uh, you know, the direct link to go there. So now on top of that, what we also have in here is um, Card Bear. We've gone to Card Bear and we have made a list of every site they support over four, what is it, over 400, I saw it. Let's see, yeah, over 400. So 425, 424, a link to the site. We update it once a month, so we're gonna be updating this in a few days. Um, the data really doesn't change that much. Is the average discount, what the current discount is, and where we suggest uh, you're gonna set your alert for or when we think you should buy, um, you know, what point to buy it at. So if you wanna go and set your alerts for your favorite stores, 
you know, this is where we suggest you set it at, where, um, where is the place you want to buy. Okay, great. So Ted said, the step ahead is awesome. We purchased over a thousand products last week with at least 70% ROI. Many things that don't look good at first pass become very profitable with the cashback and discount cards. So of course, nothing, you know, required here. I mean, for 25 bucks, I mean, you couldn't pay, a, you know, a VA maybe, probably not even, you know, an hour a day to do that. So, um, I mean, if you want to sign up, there's a link. It's 25 bucks a month. Uh, oh, and the best thing is we've done it in a Google Sheet. So it's live. So as we update this information, you can see it. You don't wait for an email, you know, once a day or once a week or however it would come out. Whenever you go there, that's the most current information. So, uh, you know, you, you know, there's no delays or wait for my morning email at 9 a.m. or whatever it is. Um, you can just go there whenever you need the data, and it's the most current information that we have. Um, and Valerie just posted the link, too. So, um, so yeah, I hope I answered all the questions. We're way over our, our hour. Um, but if anybody had anything else they wanted to cover or ask, um, you know, we're always here to help you out and uh, you know just PM me guys during the week uh, and we'll be happy to uh, help you guys with whatever you need um, you know we're right in the crunch of um, of Q4 you know leading up to Christmas we only have a few weeks left so don't waste your time researching right now now it's not the time you know to try and figure stuff out if you don't know how to do something you, you have something that you you know want to be able to do or you know, even if you see a product, you don't know if it's worth buying. If you're new to OA, new to RA, you're out in the store, you know, shoot me a picture, you know, send me a link. I'll look at it immediately. You know, I am always by some kind of device. Um, you know, I'm always here for you guys. And, um, you know, so let me know what you need and, you know, let's get you back going. Now is not the time to be guessing at things or, or any of that. Just you know, let's, let's keep it moving and, uh, you know, send me questions anytime. Just send me a message on Facebook. You know, I, I, I keep the messenger on, you know, all the time. So, um, you know, just ask whatever you guys need. And um, oh, the large bags, right. I will uh, find you the link. We actually have a, uh, like I said, we, um, and for bags, if you guys are using bags, it, you know, we go for speed. So the fastest thing to do is we use what I call zip top bags. It's like a Ziploc without, you know, the labels that are the yellow and blue make green. You know, it's a commercial uh, clear bag with a zip top. Uh, so no matter what you're doing, you cannot do it faster than that. If you have self-seal bags, it takes time to pull that little strip off and it gets stuck to your hands and static cling or you throw it on the floor. You got to seal it up and make sure it looks straight and all that. Okay. Or if you're doing shrink wrap or if you're taping the bags, whatever you're doing, nothing is faster than using a zip top bag. So you put it in just like a Ziploc. You drop it in there, slide your finger across and it's done. Um, you know, it may cost a, a little bit more, but I mean, it's so little that um, it's negligible. Um, I, I do have a great guy on eBay. I, uh, we have, um, and what I would suggest all of you do is look for a local box dis, um, distributor. There's, um, there's probably a, a box manufacturer that's local to you. They'll deliver to you. They deliver to me, you know, by the pallet. I call them up usually deliver the same day or the next day and we also get our bags from them you know and now we buy bags by the case but if you're starting out or if you need like giant bags or whatever it is buy um you know buy a hundred at a time so we started on ebay buying the bags and um, i'll find the link there's a there's a great guy for that on ebay um, that we've been buying from forever and he's got huge bags and remember you, you gotta be at least two mils any kind of bags you buy um, which is sickness. So uh, two mils sick, you know, the bigger they get, you may need heavier. There's two mils, there's four, six, eight, you know. So if you see a set of bags for like a thousand bucks or something or $800, you know, they might be eight mils sick. 
So, um, you know, that mills is the thickness of the bag. So uh, the requirement is two, which is, is pretty thin, but it'll hold just about anything. But if you start putting, you know, six pound, eight pound, whatever in there, you may need to uh, get thicker stuff. But I will, um, I'll look that up for you, uh, John, right now. And um, I'll get back to you in a few minutes on that. And we'll see you guys later. Good night.